Hey, everybody, it's Katie Whitledge with the Beyond the Technique podcast. Today, we are talking about mastering the art of uncomfortable conversations. Lord knows we need this talk. We have first time guest Jay Ladner here today. Now, before I bring him to the mic, you're going to be so fired up about him. I promise. I got to give a shout out to our sponsor, Meet Your Stylist. For those of you listening and you're not sure what the heck is Meet Your Stylist, well, think of it kind of like match.com, but for hair salons who have a team of stylists, the kind of team where if a client were to visit your website and look at your artist page or the team page, they would see all of their options and not really know which styles they should book with. So they call and they ask about who there does awesome bobs and your front desk representative shares, oh my gosh, you have to go to this person or this person. Well, that's not really why people stay with a stylist for the long haul. You're going to build a relationship with that stylist. If the connection's not there, if they don't click, the likelihood of that client is not uh, coming back is not very high. In fact, the national average retention rate is under 30%. Well, Meet Yourself solves all those problems because when clients visit your website, they're going to see an opportunity to take a short quiz that will match them with the top three stylists at your salon. And guess what? Not only is it based on who provides those services that they're looking for, it's it's deeper than that. It's about who your stylists are within and who your clients are. This goes deep into the human psyche. And there is nothing like it. Go to meetyourstylist.com to check it out for yourself and get your salon signed up. You have to have at least five styles on your team to join. If you qualify, go to meetyourstylist.com and get your salon started today. Well, if you're joining us today, I got to tell you, you need to go to YouTube, Beyond the Techniques YouTube page and watch our video version of today's podcast because that version is always raw and unedited. It's super fun. And speaking of fun, I have the man here himself, Jay Ladner. Now, you probably know him. He has been a rebel with a beauty cause in the industry for 10 years. He started his journey at Paul Mitchell, the school in Tampa, Florida. Starting early on in his career, you would find him working on print campaigns and photo shoots with magazines and Target Target Corporation. He also worked as a manager for a New York Fashion Week production company for six seasons where he helped where with his help, where he helped the vision, this is why it's raw and unedited on YouTube, (laughs) where he helped the vision of the designer come to life. Jay opened his first salon in 2013, where he grew and created two national trademark brands, joined the hair journey, and in 2017, blown away his very first product line. He has been named a rebel with a beauty cause and a national educator who focuses on the next generation of stylists by Beauty Launchpad Magazine and Modern Salon Magazine. This year, he was named top 100 stylists by Modern Salon Magazine. That's huge. As an independent educator, you can find Jay traveling the U.S. for his hair tours and collaborating with the most sought out after educators in the industry right now. He is also the brand ambassador for Oligo Professional, a Canadian-based product manufacturing company. We love Oligo. As a social media influencer and product, as a social media influencer and a podcast co-host of No Stylist Left Behind, his passion to help the beauty community grow and thrive is his purpose. And that's why he's here today. Without further ado, help me welcome to the mic, Jay Ladner. Welcome to Beyond the Technique podcast. Oh my goodness. I'm so pumped. I'm fired up. And wow, whenever I hear my recipe back, like my little bio, I'm like, all right, let's <laughs> You're go. Doing it. You're doing it, man. And you know what's yeah. on your bio are some of the new things that you provide with your ebook and even your on site classes before I get everybody all excited about hearing about those things because they're going to want that. First, I got to ask you, tell me about what prompted you to begin your journey and, and go to Paul Mitchell, the school in general. How did you decide to get into the beauty industry? So I grew up as a performer. So if anyone has witnessed me on stage or you follow me on Instagram, you know, I like to put on a show. It's just is in me. It's like that natural thing that I feel like God has given me a gift for that. And so I was a dancer. And when I was working at Bush Gardens, 
I performed with them and I did a lot of shows with them. And for extra money, I would make wigs for the shows. And I would always find myself like, I met my husband and I would always do my friend's hair. I would like cut a one length. I understood like gravity, everything fell in one spot. And I would just color their hair. And my husband at the time was like, Jet, you need a career. Like you're always talking about it. I had a blog about fashion and beauty and all of that at the time when blogging wasn't cool. Mm -hmm. Um, And I, he was like, go, but go to Pa Mitchell. Like you always talk about it. I went there three times. So Becky, the administrative leader at Paul Mitchell knew me. So when I walked through the door with Vince, she was like, oh, are you about, are you going to sign up now? And I was like, yes, today I'm going to sign up officially. So it was just something that I always had within me. Um, and I thought I was going to be a performer for the rest of my life. Um, but it led me to the beauty industry and that's when my life changed. Hmm. Well, that's incredible. And talk to me about how do you bring in entertainment as a new student when sometimes people could be like, you're in school. Who do you think you are? You don't know anything yet. How did that go for you? Just having that really um, extroverted personality and having this kind of knack for automatically um, exuding what you know and what you love. I am so happy you brought this up because I talk about this in my classes and You know, I've shared it before, but I had a chip on my shoulder when I first started at Paul Mitchell and I thought I was a shit. And like, I thought I was like everything. I was, it. yes, I'm the person, all of that. And my mentor, Alan Kemp, thank God for him. He, I I remember we're in a class, it was like a hundred people, like our school was big and he, I was disrespectful and I was just dancing with my mannequin where he was teaching us around graduation, like what right i needed to know and understand like body position all that well i wasn't paying him any mind and he kept yelling on the mic johnny cool hey johnny cool and i needed that moment because i finally turned around and he pulled me on stage and he said since you know everything here's my shares show us how you cut around graduation and i was so embarrassed to my core and i realized how disrespectful i was to him and his art and his credibility and his walk in this industry. And he was a senior national educator for Paul Mitchell. And I, my body position was standing in a triangle and he was like, get off my stage, wake up. You have something within you, pay attention. Mm -hmm. And from that moment, I needed that moment because that moment projected me to where I am today in this industry. He became my mentor he showed me how to be a salon owner when I didn't even know that was going to be my route. Mm-hmm. He showed me how to be an amazing leader, mentor. He was really hard on me. I learned a lot from him. I'm so thankful. But in the beginning, I did have that. But luckily, it was in the beginning of my school, my schooling. So, you know, from that moment on, I gave it all I got. I was involved in school activities. I, that's when I started truly believing in my don't stop get it get it lifestyle that I do now today in my life. Oh, I love don't stop get it get it. But I like that you were humbled in your moment, but actually receptive to see the light. You know, some people just can't move on from what feels like a little embarrassment or even humiliation. So I applaud you for moving forward. And I also absolutely a testament to your, you know, mentor in that situation to come alongside you and still love on you and show you like you're special. Yeah. And and they had grace with you. So that's pretty cool. And during my time, my mentorship with him, because I went into the salon with him and I remember my first day he handed me the keys and he was so rough on me. I mean, like he would cuss me out. Like that's the way he led. Um, And I could take it. I was strong enough. I mean, I've been through some dark times in my life, so that didn't phase me. Mm -hmm. He pushed me and pushed me and pushed me until my last day there when my husband and I were moving because of the military and he finally said I was Johnny cool and I lost it. I cried. I, he was like, you are him. You are the guy who was searching for, to be Johnny cool. And now you are him and like, keep it going. So when I lead, I lead from Alan Kemp's Mm. compassion to look at someone 
who is a rebel, who feels like they have to be loud to make their voice heard, to kind of calm that horse, Mm. if that that makes sense. I always seek out those people, right? We always seek out those people who remind us of ourselves, the past self, Mm -hmm. um, just to let them know that, listen, everything's going to be okay. Just because you're the loudest one in the room doesn't mean you're right. I love that. Thank you for sharing that. Absolutely. And I know you mentioned that you had no idea that salon ownership was in the cards for you and that you didn't even know that that was something you'd end up doing. What did bring you to that point where you wanted to be a salon owner? So I found myself always in a management position, even from the beginning. Like I went into a salon with like Silas, who were 15, 20 years in, and Alan wanted a new school point of view. And they just allowed me to like take the reins and fail, figure it out, figure it out, right? So whenever we moved to North Dakota, yeah, everyone, I lived in North Dakota for two years. I took over a salon there because it just felt natural, right? I always, I think everyone, there's a lot of times when you just have a natural leadership, you know, characteristic about yourself, right? And I trust that always. And I, and I lead without fear. I don't know what it is. I'm still trying to figure that out at 32. Mm-hmm. Um, so I took on that salon and I made it epic and built a team and all of that. And that salon, and I've been away for eight years, is still thriving. Or six years and it's still, no, it's been eight, sorry. Eight years and I'm, it's still thriving and it's still doing great. And, you know, we, we pass on the torch of that. And then we moved to Dayton, Ohio. And the moment I landed in Dayton, Ohio, I looked at my husband and I'm like, we're going to open a salon. It's time. I'm laughing because I, I thought was, you were going to say the minute we landed, I, we have to get out of here. No, no. Because <laughs> you're I, in hey, Los Angeles now. So I was like thinking yeah. that's what you were going to say. Okay. But you love but it. coming from mine at North Dakota to coming to downtown Dayton, Ohio, okay. the Midwest, <laughs> that was like a huge city for us. Um, it was like, whoa, party time. Like we're in a city. Like it was so great, even though it's a smaller town, but I love Dayton, Ohio. Six to seven weeks after we moved, our doors opened. No one knew who we were. And what I am good at is building a brand with no one knowing who you are. No one knowing who you are. We started in a small 700 square foot space. I could afford it on my own if I had one or two guests a week. Right. So I just hit the ground running. We gave back to the community. We were a force to be reckoned with. And if you all know me, the unicorn magician that I am, we shook Dayton, Ohio's soul. I ran around in platforms and glitter pants and I was just my authentic self. And thankfully, Dayton, Ohio, shout out to them. Their LGBT community is electric. It's beautiful. It's amazing. And they're accepting. So a year into that, we expanded into a almost 4,000 square foot space wow. um, through the support of the city and our guests, our raving fans. And as well, there was a community of like a military base there. So me being a military spouse, that also helped grow the brand as well. So it was an amazing ride, but we have parted ways with that journey and my girls in Dayton, Ohio are still rocking it out there. Um, but it was time for me to transition and I always say adapt and evolve. So now I'm in LA and I'm booth running and I'm rebuilding. And, you know, I love being in this space right now because when I stand in front of the amazing stylists that trust me on Instagram and on social media, and when they show up to my class, a lot of them are building and growing and I wasn't in that space. And I think when you're in survival mode is when you perform the most, that's where the magic happens. And I wanted to get right back into that space with them. Well, and I know that we're going to talk about the art of uncomfortable conversations, but before we dive into that, what you obviously are brilliant with brand and marketing and growing what was your favorite thing about having your own team of stylists? And what do you feel like you, what was like the magic you brought to the table that really attributed to that growth? I think it's mentorship. I think it's having those conversations that we all avoid or Mm -hmm. we're scared to have. I, you know, I made a lot of mistakes as an owner, as we all do, if you're in that ownership. 
um, but it's asking for help along the way. It's that mentorship. I have been so grateful for the mentors I've had in my career. If you think about it, I've only been in the industry for 10 years and I just headlined in ISSE as an independent educator. So it's like anything is possible. You just got to, you know, a closed mouth never gets fed. And Mm -hmm. it's my duty to give back to how my mentors gave back to me. I know it's my role and I loved mentoring as an owner. I loved looking at them in the face and being like, what do you need help on? Let's get through it or you're not doing this okay. This is not okay. Let's find a solution. Wow, good for you. Now when it comes to the art of uncomfortable conversations, Jay, and and really mastering that, tell us where, first off, why is this a struggle do you think for salon owners? And what do we do to improve? Why do you think it's such a struggle? We live in an emotional industry. We are licensed to touch. We feel like we have to as owners because it's so close. We're around each other so much. And I understand in other like organizations and other fields, you're around them, but you're probably on a computer and on a phone. This is a relationship business. We are in the relationship business. So we tack on all of our employees' stress right? They have children. We put that on their shoulders, right? And a lot of times when we cannot navigate through the uncomfortable conversations, it's because we haven't set ourselves up for success, meaning systems, dialogue, standards that we have, our rules of engagement for our business. And the moment you realize that that's important, that's number one, before you open those doors, uncomfortable conversations will be easy. You have to take the emotion out. It's not about you. It's Mm -hmm. not about your insecurities. It's not about your walk. It's not about, are you delivering? It's about the business. And when you understand that, when you really dig deep into the standards and holding everyone accountable, uncomfortable conversations will become easy. I'm fired up. You I hear fired me? up because here's what I'm saying. I don't want to give credit where credit's not due, but I have to imagine that your husband, who has extensive military experience, has had somewhat of an impact on your leadership. Oh my okay. God. Thank Tell you me so it. much. Let's <laughs> dive into that. I am a feeler. I feel like I'm a Don. I absorb everything, right? <laughs> I, I just like, I'm that artistic person. And there's times when I would cry my eyes out over letting go someone or, you know, after having a conversation with them, I would just like, I would weave and move through the conversation and not be direct. And having my husband Vince, shout out to him, you know, our brand is not what it is today without him. And his whole industry or his career was leadership. He retired as a chief master sergeant, which is the highest enlisted to give you context. But he would just sit there and, and I finally asked him, Vince, I have to be in the room with you to witness what you're doing. And guess what it was? What? Facts. All factual stuff. Everything that the person was doing within the business, it was all factual. It was not emotional. So when you let the emotion out and you list out, right, and you have to create, keep a system, you have to write it down, legally you have to like everything that you witness you have to handle it right when it happens it's like you have to constantly be involved you cannot run but when you're factual there's no swaying off of that because facts are facts right and clear is kind unclear is unkind so when you're clear with your employees or you know if you're commission salon team-based salon all of that you know, when you're clear with them, everyone will succeed. Mm-hmm. But Vince was an amazing mm-hmm. spouse and business partner to go in and with because he really showed me that facts will always lead the way. And you have to just stand your ground because it's a business and you got to move and shake through it. But it all comes down to systems. 
Mm. No one wants to do it. It's ugly. It's not pretty. But you, and if you're not good at it, hire someone who's great at it. What are the systems that you've implemented around the art? Because art is, you know, it's, it's um, creative. Uh, around uncomfortable conversations. And could you give us an example of a time that you had to have one of those conversations, which I imagine everybody listening, you're like, every day I have to have an uncomfortable yeah, conversation. Yeah, yeah, But yeah, what are uh, some of those systems that help you in, in this lane? Well, I was always like, once I started getting into the art of the uncomfortable conversation and mastering that, it was fun for me. Because once you do it once, the second time's easier. The third time you got it and the fourth time game over. You know what I mean? It's just like, you got it. But I am all about communication and having conversations with my squad, with my tribe, with my team. And listen, I still have team members. I have educators who work for J. Ladner Education. I still, to this day, have to have uncomfortable conversations about our standards, our cultures, and what we stand for. So I would just let them know, right? Hello, Sarah. I'll just throw out a name. I never had someone named Sarah work for me, but just so you know, give you context. But okay, Sarah, you know, once a week we have a check-in. This is a safe space both ways. I want you to be open, right? I'm asking permission. I want you to be open to my feedback and I'm as well open to your feedback as well, right? Mm -hmm. So let's get into it. So I made it fun and I allowed them to know what was happening. I never did it blindly. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. So it takes a few tries, but what about implementing, I guess, your processes or just kind of this is the outline that you want to go about like you just mentioned asking for permission and opening kind of the right doors to an open conversation how do you then instill that on management because as a salon owner it's like physically and mentally and emotionally impossible to be on and in the salon at all times absolutely so i think clear as kind you have to have a roadmap right so it's basically about like having a management team, you know, a smaller team is always better for me. Like that's where I stand. And I actually did a podcast at ISCC about it with Gina Bianca. And I took the smaller team because you're, you can be more one-on-one with them. If you're a big salon owner, big team, awesome. You need help, ask for help. But Clara's kind, so you have to sit and do the ugly work. I say it's ugly work because it doesn't feel good. It's not fun. It's not artful. It's not all of that. But systems like, okay, when a, when a situation occurs, right, someone doesn't answer the phone with a smile and the way we greet, consistency is everything. How do you handle this conversation? So I would say, okay, you are now my management team. When you see this happening, We're just going to pull them aside and say, here at Solange Ladner, we answer the phone with a smile and this is our greeting. Is there anything that I can help you with that maybe you don't really understand or you need guidance on? What can I help you with? Right? So it's understanding the way that delivery works, right, is everything. The way you deliver it in a package. Mm -hmm. Think about like whenever you got a gift. If it's packaged gorgeously right? You're going to be so excited. If it's like done sloppy and just half-handed, you're not really going to enjoy it. That's so smart and empowering really for everybody. And refreshing. What what do we risk as salon owners if we don't do these things? We, we want to avoid that conflict, but what do we risk if we're avoiding conflict a lot? You're going to close your doors. Everything that you dreamed of, everything that you put on the line, everything within you, the business will close. The systems and standards, and that's truth. And listen, there's been multiple times when I almost had to close my doors, six or seven, eight times. But it all surrounded from me not standing up for my brand, right? Not having systems, not having those uncomfortable conversations. And when I say uncomfortable conversations, I think everyone listening can kind of like understand this. Mm-hmm. It's that butterfly. It's that you, you just hurt within, right? 
because of our insecurities. A lot of it was me. Like I have an issue with abandonment, right? So it was hard for me to lead that conversation if I had to let someone go and it wasn't a good fit. And maybe they were great performers, but I knew they would succeed at a different space or at a solo, like a independent space or whatever that was. Like I always led through that, but I also had to deal with my core values myself, right? To be able to hold everyone up on my shoulders. And thankfully I had my husband as well. So I wasn't great at it in the beginning. So I had someone to help me. So I think we also need to ask for help. Yeah. When it came to salon ownership, was that Alan who helped you with some of those things? Was it your husband or did you actually have a salon business coach? Yes. I would love to share who my business coach is. Okay. So Nina Kovner at Passion Squared. Hey, Nina. Love you. <laughs> she has been such an amazing mentor and business coach for me. Um, if you are in help, need of help, of systems, of just having clarity, um, Nina Kovner is your girl. She's has led me and helped me build my brand for what it is. But I also had my husband, Vince, as well, with all of his leadership training. Um, but Nina Kovner being in the, in the industry for over 30 years, she was like, worked with a major hair brand for 25 years. She's phenomenal. So I would love for you, if you're feeling lost or, you know, reach out to me or reach out to Nina Kovner. She's brilliant. I, love I and right. So as owners, we have to have accountability partners. We have to have people that hold us accountable. And I remember there were times in the beginning where I didn't show up with my home play or my homework. And Nina was like, this conversation's over. Come correct. Mm. You know what I mean? So it held me accountable. We have to have that. We always have to have that. And think of a corporation. There's a board of directors making sure the company is leading the way, right? So there's always someone up there. So don't be afraid. It's okay to not be okay. But you got to speak up. A closed mouth never gets fed. And no one knows who you are unless you tell them. So if you're tanking, it's on you. That's your fault. Mm. I'm inspired. I know everybody listening is so <laughs> And don't worry, everybody. I have in our show notes all the links for you to connect with Jay. I know that you're doing big things outside of helping salon owners find their strength and courage with having those uncomfortable conversations. You actually have a lot of resources for hairstylists as well. Tell us about your patterns, placements, and potions ebook. So last year, I launched my first ever hair tour all by myself, independent educators. Let's go. It's the <laughs> new direction of this industry. I'm mm -hmm. so woke on it. I, I love being a part of it. We are disruptors and it's fun. So while I was on tour, I was doing all of my patterns and placements and everyone was like, where can I have this in my hands? So one day I looked at Vince my OG. And I was like, I'm writing a book. And he was like, okay. So when I was on the plane and when I had free time, I was just writing context about what means to me, like what those patterns of placements were. I created diagrams, knowledge in the breakdown, potions, all my favorite flavors with pictures and bubbles with the formulations and you know, there's a three-page self-love workbook within it because I feel like as artists, we have to work on ourselves. So it's three pages packed full of ways to grow yourself. It's, it's fun. It's eye-opening. It's, you know, awakening to you. You have to put in the work. I will always say that you have to make time for yourself to grow. As well, we have ways that I navigate a consultation ways that I formulate the four rules of formulation, the four rules of connecting and connection. Also, there is a J glossary because I know that I say my own dialogue. I love it. So it gives guidance because there's been times in my classes when I start all my tangents and I'm saying all my words. They're like, what does that mean? And you can see the room like, uh, unclear, right? So now there's like a dictionary, J glossary, 
Um, yeah, it's 30 pages packed full of love, compassion, practical techniques that you can use tomorrow behind the chair. Claire is kind, guys. Okay, and so I'm are your... these like free resources that you're providing people? Okay, so investment? this e this yeah. ebook is forty nine dollars. You can get it on jladner.com. and I always have flash sales randomly. So make sure you're following me at Mr. J Ladner on Instagram, and you'll see all of that. Um, but it's forty nine dollars, and I promise it's worth it. Okay, I love that, and I know that you brought up to me that you actually will come to a salon or to a city to ha have an event for stylists. Tell us about your try me technique that you provide now. So my try me technique is a brand new technique that is all about triangles within the head shape. And I'm only sharing it on my tours with Larissa Love, my class with Bang Bang Balayage and Nina Tolio, and my personal classes that I have, you know, on stages with all the co-professional ISSC, I shared it. And why I only share it in my classes is because I believe in education. I'm an educator who is educated. And I believe that the value of that understanding um, in this industry is the only way that you're going to grow and thrive behind the chair is getting inspired. And I feel so thankful for all the love and the support that I get personally in this industry. I'm nothing without the stylist showing up for me. I'm just like guests showing up for us behind the chair. So it's a special gift for everyone who shows up. This technique, you can do a partial or a full in 20 to 35 minutes. Wow. It's the way you place it on the head shape. And it doesn't matter what head shape someone has, you will navigate through it quickly, precisely, and with passion and purpose. Okay, so if I'm bringing you to our salon, what's the investment look like? So the investment, um, salon, or do you have kind of options? So I ask, um, majority of my classes, I ask the salon be able to host about 50 people, right? Because I want their community to grow, their community. I ask them to open the doors to their local stylists in the area who are in different salons, who are booth renters, who are mm -hmm. solo stylists, right? solo entrepreneurs. I want that community to grow. When I leave, I want there to be a stronger foundation of love and support in that area. So there's a couple ways that I do it. You can have me independently. I ask you just reach out to me and we can dialogue that. Or you host one of our tours that we have going on. Um, and that I deal with the ticket price myself on my website and then other people that I you know, other independent educators on their website as well. We are going to be talking after this recording. Yes. <laughs> oh my gosh. My stylist would be so flipping out out of their minds about this. Okay. Well, back, I got to focus because we are recording on YouTube, everybody. <laughs> um, I'm so excited about you. You mentioned that there's this movement for independent educators. Tell me about that and why this is the most exciting, disruptive thing that's happening to our industry right now. Well, listen, 10, five, five years ago, 10 years ago, we needed brands to lead the way. And there's this new disruptor happening. And if you're woke, you're woke. And if you're not, now you are. Um, it's time that stylists take back our chairs. It's time that we hold brands accountable. It's time that we have better products. It's time that we claim what we do. We are the stylists behind the chair. Every single day, we make this industry so phenomenal. It's our voices that make it matter. We are the ones who are leading the way. And I'm so, I can think you can tell on YouTube and this podcast, I'm so passionate about it because we put value on brands to let us know our value and that's enough. Our value is because we show up every day, 12 hours behind the chair a day, sometimes. We are tired and we just want better products and we want better leaders. We want better examples. And I'm sorry, I'm going to show up to a class to someone who's doing what I'm doing behind the chair. And I don't, I don't think we need to be sold anymore. We just want good techniques. We want good educators that will show us 
work-life balance. We need phenomenal people who will inspire us to light us up and to know that no Silas will be left behind. That's my mission. And I'm in the trenches. I'm building just like you. And I will promise I share every single thing on my Instagram as I can. In my classes, I'm an open book. And it's so important to me. And it's disruptive. And if you go to hair shows, you'll see a shift. There's a shift happening. And I'm so excited for PBA to be you know, one of the leaders who are bringing independent educators. Thank you, Professional Beauty Association, Mm -hmm. for being one of the first to really invest in these independent companies that are stylists and owners and educators who are like putting everything on the line. I'm fired up. I'm fired up too. Uh, Okay. So for everybody listening, we have a link in our show notes to connect with Jay on Instagram. You'll have a link to his website and a link to his podcast, No Stylist Left Behind. So I have to ask that you join me again. Let's do this. Let's do, try to make it a point to have these kind of conversations at least a couple of times a year. I know you're busy, um, but before we end today's talk, what would be some kind of final words of wisdom you'd want to share with everybody listening to just be an encouragement? And let's talk about the stylist that's kind of hit that five-year mark, maybe five to 10, but they're, they haven't broken through. They're maybe not on stage. Maybe they feel a little, like you mentioned, left behind, like all these big things are happening. Should I feel like I need to have big things happening to be happy? Or am I okay the way I am now? Just how can we encourage you know, what I would call the majority of stylists, especially the stylists on our team and the pressure for salon owners to provide them the coolest, most progressive everything. Yes. How could we just be an encouragement to one another? Yes. So I would say a closed mouth never gets fed and no one knows who you are unless you tell them. So what I love telling people that I get to meet is like, speak up speak up, let people who move your soul, let mentors that you want to mentor you, let them know, let them know, speak up. And guess what? You'll be surprised of the opportunities that may come from that and move through fear. Just take a deep breath, trust the foundation that you have, trust the person that you have, the human that you are on this earth, and just know that it's going to be okay. And that when you speak up and you let people know your passion and what you want, go shadow someone. You want to be an educator? Shadow that independent educator. Let them know you'll take out the trash for them. Let them know you'll hand them foils. You're not above it. You know what I mean? If you really want it, you'll put everything on the line for it. Jay, you're amazing. Don't stop believe in yes absolutely i i think that's oh. just you know claim what you want yep. because if you're waiting for someone like me to reach out to you <laughs> i'm moving and shaking but i do need help i do need support so whenever i have people reach out to me i'm like absolutely yes mm. i mean show up show up for me and i'm gonna show up for you love it you're such a breath of fresh air thank you so much for joining me and it's been such a pleasure to have you thank you for taking time to be with me today thank you guys so much i hope that you are as motivated and inspired literally i cannot wait to talk to jay about the classes that he provides at salons and his community events where you have the opportunity of hosting a tour so thank you jay for everything you're bringing to this industry. It's so exciting, it's fun, and it's positive. And my biggest takeaway is when you've talked about, you better come correct. I gotta use that. That's one of your J glossary terms that I'm gonna be using now. You better come correct. So thank you for joining me today and thank you everybody. Now, before you leave me, I have to tell you, One week from today is our opportunity to be together for an online sales class. This is so important. If you're a salon owner, you got to bring in your operations team, anybody that deals with guest communications. We are hosting an event called Convert Callers into Clients. These are the skills that every salon operation team needs to know 
in order to close sales and stay in control. So again, this is Monday, February 17th at 3 p.m. You can sign up online. And even if for some reason you missed the event, we'll still send you all of the resources and the video class afterwards. You better get signed up because that special investment won't be the same after the online class event. We are gonna teach you what every single phone call should include, how to capture every caller as a lead, how to quickly funnel them towards a reservation and how to spend way less time on the phone. If you need help staying in control of the conversation, we've got your back. And most importantly, we're gonna teach you how to close 90% of those callers to become salon clients and how to make sure that we're connecting those guests with the right stylist the very first visit. Because as you know, we do not get a second chance to make a first impression. These skills are skills that are translatable through all, communica through all communication platforms. So though you are learning how to have a phone conversation, you're gonna be able to utilize these skills with emails, texting, social media, Zoom, Facebook, everything. Come and get in, the, in on this class. It's gonna be a ton of fun. We're gonna have an awesome time and we are gonna rock it.